Hello, my name is Matt Colligan, and I'm the Environmental Education Manager here at Airlie Gardens, where today we're going to discuss the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly, the state butterfly symbol for North Carolina. We're here today to discuss one of North Carolina's natural treasures, the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. In 2012, this butterfly became the state symbol for a butterfly here in North Carolina. Thanks to the work and encouragement of the Cape Fear Garden Club and the legislative action of the North Carolina General Assembly, this butterfly now joins the ranks of the dogwood, which is our state flower, and the northern cardinal, our state bird. For more information about the importance of the eastern tiger swallowtail butterfly to North Carolina, here's a word from State Senator Tom Goolsby. North Carolina is blessed with a community of biodiversity not found anywhere else on earth. And the eastern tiger swallowtail butterfly has been selected as our state's special butterfly. The reason? It's found in all 100 counties in North Carolina and it's one of 170 different species of butterfly that's found in our state. I'm excited to have helped push this legislation and see to it that we selected such a special butterfly that represents the unique biodiversity here in North Carolina that provides us with clean air, water, and food for animals, plants, and human beings alike. I'm excited that we picked such a special butterfly and that we live in such a wonderful state with so much diversity from the coast, the Piedmont, and up into the mountains. And as I said, we can find this butterfly in every single county in North Carolina. Official symbols represent the cultural and natural heritage of a place. So how did the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly become the state butterfly symbol amongst the cast of over 170 butterflies that live within our state? To answer that question, we're gonna to have to go back in time to the year 1585. Raleigh, the state capital of North Carolina, is named after Sir Walter Raleigh, an English gentleman who sponsored some of the first colonial expeditions to the New World. Raleigh's plan was to establish the first permanent English settlement here in the New World. And he didn't come along on these voyages, but he sent along in his stead John White, who served as the first governor of the Roanoke Colony, which at that point was in the Virginia colonies, but today is in North Carolina, right outside of Nags Head. And this fellow John White, who served as the governor of this Roanoke Colony, he was also an illustrator and a map maker. And one of the things that he did was to draw some of the first and the most well-known record of Native American peoples here along the Carolina coast. And he studied also the language of the Algonquin people here, the Pamlico Indians as they were known. And it was during this time studying the, the native life and the natural life along the coast that John White illustrated the first butterfly in the New World by a European. And the butterfly he chose to illustrate happen to be the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. It's easy to see why John White was attracted to the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. It's one of the largest butterflies in the area. It's brilliant and its tiger stripes across its bold yellow wings make it stand out very easily in the, in the landscape. And like all butterflies, the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail is an insect, which means it has three main body parts, the head, the thorax, the abdomen, it also has wings in its adult form. And these butterflies, which are also in the same insect group or order as moths, known as Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera meaning scaly covered wings. And indeed, butterflies and their moth cousins have tiny little scales that cover their wings. And these scales, if you look at them under a microscope, look just like the shingles on a roof or a fish's scales. And these butterflies, they have an amazing life cycle and we can learn a lot from observing that change. Throughout its life, the butterfly will go through four distinct life stages known as a complete metamorphosis. It all starts off as an egg when the female butterfly finds the right plant to lay her eggs for the future generation. Mother butterflies can tell exactly which plant to lay their eggs on because they taste the plant material with the tips of their feet. They have little chemoreceptors or taste buds on their, their toes. And those, those chemoreceptors can tell a butterfly if that plant is a suitable food for its baby caterpillar. 
And it turns out that all butterflies are very picky eaters. Of over 170 species of butterfly in North Carolina, each one has its own particular taste for plant foliage. For example, the monarch butterfly can only eat milkweed. If it tries to eat something other than milkweed, it will die. Similarly, the eastern tiger swallowtail is also a picky eater. In fact, it prefers things like tulip tree and black cherry as it's some of its favorite host plants. And caterpillars, we think of them very differently than the adult butterflies. We might recognize that adult butterflies will take nectar from a variety of flowers, but it turns out as a caterpillar, they have a very different way of eating. They actually have mandibles or chewing mouth parts, much like a human. And so what they're after is chewing on the foliage of plants. They love to eat their salad, but they can't just eat any old plant. Over millions of years, these insects have developed a particular appetite and adaptations to feed on certain plants. And so without those certain native species of plant, like the black cherry or the tulip tree, there would be nothing for that tiger swallowtail to eat. Upon hatching from its egg, the caterpillar is a voracious eating machine. And it turns out that these caterpillars will eat and eat so much that they will have to expand their bodies. And to do that, they have to molt their skin. Four to five times the caterpillar, the larvae, will molt its skin and the period of time in between each of those moltings is called an instar. And after the fifth instar, most caterpillars are ready to pupate. When a caterpillar decides to pupate, it creates a chrysalis, wrapping its body in a pupal skin that will protect it as the caterpillar transforms into the adult butterfly beneath. Once the adult butterfly has developed inside of the chrysalis, it's time to emerge. When that butterfly comes out of its chrysalis, it's been wrapped up in a tiny little package for quite some time, and its wings are not fully developed. So what it has to do is pump blood that is in its abdomen and inflate its wings. And this process will take a couple of hours, at the end of which the wings will be dried. Once the wings of the butterfly are dried, that butterfly can fly off searching for nectar or to find a mate. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly and its significance to North Carolina. Once again, my name is Matt Colligan here at Airly Gardens. Happy butterflying.